Okay, in this uh, video, we're going to work with um, printf. And printf, uh, work with printf. Printf is another method just like printline and print in system.out. Um, but it allows you to format your output better than print and printline. Thus, the printf. Um, so, there are some special characters you need to know inside a printf for it to be used. So I'm going to create um, maybe a header right here. I'm going to kind of follow this one down, right? Um, and I'm going to type some of these characters that we're going to use at first and we're going to build upon them as we go. So I'm going to use uh, percent %s, right, first, um, which is for a string. I'm going to use percent um, %d for an integer, decimal, right, integer. And what else are we going to use at the beginning? Um, maybe a percent %c for a character, right? Um, these are the basics, right, for a character char, right? Okay, so let's talk about how printf works. If I have a variable, um, like int, or let, let's use a double, right? Double um, um, money, and I assign it a value like 1.7. Um, one of the most commonly used um, things inside a printf is when you need to display money, and here's why. Uh, let's say I was going to print that amount of money out using a print line. So I say system.out.println, you spent, and then I'm going to put a dollar sign, right? And then I'm going to append money to it. And then I'm going to say, you know, at my store. Right. So what's this going to do? This is going to print out you spend, you know, a dollar seventy with a dollar sign at my store. So if I ran this code, right, I would get this. Now, we can all tell that this doesn't look right. Why doesn't it look right? It doesn't look right because we don't display money as 1.7. We display it as 1.70. However, for floating point numbers or 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 doubles, even if I put the 1.70 there, right, and, and run it, it's still going to do a 1.7 because the trailing zeros aren't needed, and Java knows this, right, in doubles. So sometimes it's useful to print out money that has two places after the, the, the decimal point, right? So let's see how we can do this. So up here, I'm going to add another one because I started with money, right? I'm going to come up and say percent %f for floating point, right? Float or double, right? Okay, so what we can do is we can use a printf, and we use it almost the same way. We say system.out.printf, right? Now... Um, Eclipse is going to help you out and it's going to put stuff in there. I'm going to delete that for now. Now, the way printfs work is we put a quote with something in it, right? And then we follow it with as many variables as we want. We don't mix quote with variable with more quotes like we do in print line. We put everything we want up here in the quotes and then we put comma variable, comma variable, comma variable, comma variable, depending on how many variables there are. Now, in this case, there's only one. So what I'm going to do inside the quotes is I'm going to write you spent and I'm going to put a dollar sign, right? And then I'm going to leave a space for now at my store, right? And then I'm going to put comma and the variable I want printed, right? Money. Okay, now I need to tell the printf where in this string, where in this string I want the value of money to be displayed. And I want it to be displayed right here, right after that dollar sign, right? 
So what I'm going to use is my special formatting characters, which are up here, percent %s, percent %d, percent %c, percent %f, right? Now, percent %f is a floating point number. Now, um, the floating point number takes some characteristics. I could say uh, percent um, point two f. Now let's explain what percent point two f means. Percent point two f means I want to use two um, decimal places after the decimal place. I want two values printed after the decimal place, regardless of how many values there are. So if there were 100 values after the decimal place, let's say I had 1.79642, it's only going to print the first two, right? I could also put a number before the decimal point, like 5, and that's going to use 5 spaces before the decimal point, no matter how big the money is. But for money, I don't care how many are used before it. I can just let that be whatever it is. So percent point two %f is one of the most commonly used formatting to print money. So it's going to take this value of money and it's going to fill it in right here, right where that percent %f is, percent point two %f, and it's going to use the formatting which says put two spaces after the decimal point. So if I run this now, now I can see that my second line, the one that uses the printf, used 1.70. Now let's just make some changes here. If I use 0.4f, then what's going to happen? It's going to fill with four, zero, four values after the decimal point, right? So clearly 0.2f is the way that we want to display money. Okay, let's say we were going to display um, columns again. Remember we were, we were doing columns, right? So we could use um, strings for columns. So what could I do? Instead of trying to line things up, I could use printfs. So let's, we'll leave our money example, right? Because that's not a bad example. And then we're going to declare, um, let's declare some values, right? I could declare um, a couple integers, int x, equals equals 5 int y equals 100 then let's declare some strings string 1 s1 equals you know hello and string s2 equals goodbye right okay Okay, so now I have some strings. So now let's use those. So let's assume I wanted those to be displayed in some columns. So I could use print line, right? And I could put column one and then column two. But we went down this road before, then I have to figure out how to put spaces in between all of the others, right? And it gets very confusing, right? So what I could do is I could use printf. Okay, so let's see how we would use a printf. Um, instead of print line, I'm going to use printf. Now, printf, again, takes a quote with all our formatting in here, and then it's followed by the variables we want um, printed, the variables or strings or any or values, right? So what I can do is I can use percent %s up here, and I could say I want... Um, I want 15 characters, s I'm using is for a string, so I want 15 characters in a string, right? And then I want the second column to be, I don't know, we can make it whatever we want, we can make it 15 also, I can make it 12, right? 12 s. And then I want it to print, um, so I'm going to put comma, and I, I don't have variables for column one and column two, so I'm just going to put those strings, column one, and the next thing I want printed is column two. So let's dissect what I did in this line. So printf takes this first formatting, this first string as formatting, right? So then it takes, after the comma, it takes whatever's first here, column one, and it puts it into the first formatting here. So it's going to use 15 columns to
to print column one. And then it takes the second thing passed in and it puts it into the second formatting. So it's going to use 12 columns to print column two. So it's padding it with spaces, just like the 0.2F padded with zeros because it was a F, floating point number, percent %S is going to pad with spaces. So if I just ran this code the way it is, I would get the line that says column one and column two, and they would the first one would be using 15 characters, and the second would be, uh, let's put a new line in between here. So print F is like print. It's not like print line. It does not put a carriage return at the end. So you have a couple ways to do that. I could put in between these, I could do system.out.println, right, and type that. Or I could use special character up here. Just like in print and print line, we have backslash n. In uh, print f, we have percent n. Actually, backslash n also works, but it's better to keep it consistent with percents. So now this first line with the money is going to have a, a carriage return at the end, so it won't all be on one line. So let's run this. Okay, so now let's look at this column one, column two. It used 15 spaces to print column one. And if you notice, right, let's count, right, to be sure, right, I'm going to count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, right? So it used 15 spaces to fill column one and it padded with spaces at the beginning. And then it used 12 spaces to do column two, right? So if I counted these, I'd get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, right? So it used 12 spaces to use those. And then I would like to force a new line at the end. So now let's see how we could line up the next lines, right? So I could use another printf and Eclipse is filling in. Sometimes when Eclipse fills things in, it's really useful, and sometimes when Eclipse fills things in, it gets in the way, but I'll let you decide that. So now, let's say I wanted to print um, one of the numbers and one of the strings in each column. So column one will be my numbers, and column two will be my strings. So the first thing I want to print, again, using 15 spaces, is an integer, which we use uh, D for that, for decimal. Would be better. I agree it would be better with an I, but it is not. Okay. And then the second column is going to be a string, so I'm going to use percent %S, but I wanted to use 12 spaces for that, right? And then I'm going to print a uh, new line. Now, the first value I want to be filled into this decimal is my X, and the second value that I want to be filled into my string is my S1. So I'm going to put comma X, comma S1, and I'm going to run this. And if I see what happens when I run it, my columns line up really nicely now because I'm forcing the first column to be 15, the second column to be 12. And again, it's padding these at the left-hand side. It's padding at the left-hand side. So now let's say I want my second set of values. I could copy this line, right? And I could pass in Y and S2, right? And now everything's going to line up nicely because my printf forces each column to be 15 characters for column one and forces all column twos to be 12 characters, right? So it's easy to line up. Now, Sometimes we may want to, um, when, when we print this out, this is called right alignment, right, or a right adjustment. It's forcing all the values to the right-hand side of the column, right, because column one starts over here on the left and ends after the one. So the five is right formatted, right? It's, it's formatting it to the right, and the hundred is pushed to the right. I can push to the left also, right? I can push to the left also. And the way I do that is I put a uh, negative sign in front of the formatting. So let, let's just format the left, the first column to be left adjusted, right? So I'm going to use negatives on the first column's formatting. And if we run this now, right, now I see column one is left formatted, right? And if I wanted the other columns to be left adjusted, right, I could use a negative sign there also, right? 
and if I run it now it's all left adjusted so it's padding the spaces to the right right it's padding it out to 15 here it's padding it out to 15 right here it's okay so um, so the ones you're most likely going to be use, using the most the first one you're going to use the most is the percent F and it's for money and percent point two F is the most commonly used reason for print F in your beginning programming because you don't want money to be de to be displayed as 1.7 you want it to be displayed as 1.70 so percent point two F takes care of that um, percent S is very useful for columns as you saw right we we line up columns right um, percent D is incredibly important because typically we're printing out integers right and then percent F or, or sorry percent C for characters um, we can pad those spaces out again this is a general introduction to print F a um, couple things to remember print F is like a print statement it does not put a new line at the end you have to put the percent N at the end of the string if you want a new line to appear after the print F ends